Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm going to be doing another live stream of coding the uh, Vegan Buddies uh, mobile app today. Last week I said that this week I was going to be working on the Matrix bot uh, database and I kind of had a change of heart when I was thinking about doing that because uh, what I realized is that if I spend like I don't know six months developing the matrix bot for like the back end for geolocation of vegan buddies and the people that they're mentoring uh, the thing is that those six months aren't going to be developing any kind of community and I thought that maybe it would be better if people could join something soon to kind of have like the really, really terrible minimum viable product as soon as possible, or at least have some way that they can actually sign up and become mentors even w when the Vegan Buddies app doesn't exist yet. And so I can do that uh, if I work on getting the Lobsters server uh, set up. And I can't actually set up the lobster server on the stream because that would require a lot of credentials and I can't stream entering credentials into servers. I also don't have a server yet. And one negative thing is once you start actually hosting the lobster server, I'm going to be paying or somebody's going to be paying. Perhaps Otobi Ochi is going to be paying. I haven't asked them yet if they're going to pay for that. Uh, somebody's going to be paying for that server, and so that's a cost. It's a pretty small cost. Maybe I can go with serverless and make that cost very, very small. In any case, there is going to be a cost associated with that, and uh, so if I'm going to do that, I have to make it count. But today I'm going to try to figure out how I can run a lobster server just to see how difficult it is, because I want to get that lobster server running as quickly as possible. So just to remind myself and everyone else, if anyone's actually watching this, of the architecture. We have this uh, lobster server that manages mentor identities and it has the ability to invite new people to become members and it also has a message board because lobsters is initially intended as a message board and uh, then we have the user index which is this matrix bot that um, I was developing last stream and the stream before that and the stream before that and the matrix server, we don't need to develop that. That already exists. And uh, the mobile app, that needs to be developed, but it can be mostly based off of uh, an existing matrix uh, app, such as Fluffy Chat. And I wanted to use Fluffy Chat because Fluffy Chat seems to work at least. And it's open source, so it shouldn't cost anything. So. I can go and I can open up lobsters and I can see about, I can try to find the source code for lobsters. It's also open source. It's in Ruby, which I don't know. Ruby on Rails. And uh, where is the source code? I always found it really difficult to find the source code. I've looked for it several times. Um, okay, so that's the easiest way to find the source code is to coggy it. Coggy isn't a very good verb. Um, the quite sad source code. Uh-huh, this is some kind of self-deprecatory talking. So.
CDPU vegan buddies get uh yeah how do you make a I don't remember how you do a subtree. <laughs> Sub module add lobsters. Give it the status and yeah, so we have the source code. Why didn't that tab completion not work? Bim. Aha, uh -huh, this is uh, not. This is not self-deprecatory. This is making fun of haters. I wonder what this hater wrote. I, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm wasting time, obviously. But I'm curious what the hater wrote for some reason. I guess I can just click on the link like a normal person. Uh, it doesn't let me, yeah, of course, I shouldn't waste time with it. Anyways. Uh, well... Initial steps, so I should... So you need both node and rails. This is really confusing. Um, They require MariaDB, or they've only tested it with MariaDB or MySQL. Um, Postgres is a lot easier to maintain than Maria and MySQL, but um, I don't know if it's easier to maintain it if it's not supported. Um, So there's actually quite a bit to wire together here. They have this cron job that seems to send mails and post to Twitter. I don't know what that does. I'm going to probably not enable that one. Um, and I don't know what traffic range does either. So I need to I need to make it so that this is going to run in Docker Compose, which I'm going to use as my uh, so so on my server. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a Docker Compose running with uh, lobsters, MariaDB, uh, and Postgres. 
with PostKiss? Do you, do you think I, do I think I should have two databases? I don't know, like, PostGIS really doesn't take much memory. It's just that you have to deal with backups twice. You have to write a backup script for my MariaDB and PostGIS if you have both databases running. Or I can make Diesel... I don't remember... Uh, does Diesel support MariaDB? Go ahead and save that to... They don't say anything about that. So it supports uh, Postgres MySQL. So I could use Maria. Uh, for the matrix bot. I guess, um, I don't know if my MariaDB supports geo, uh, geodata. And the thing is that it's nice to have geodata support for the bot because the bot is going to be asking frequently the question, give me all of the users that are close to this uh, latitude and longitude. And that kind of um, query could be difficult um, without. But actually, you can do that query by just making it so that there was a range of latitudes and longitudes supported. Like you could ask for all latitudes that are less than and greater, less than x and greater than y, and then just like take the users, the user who's doing the search their latitude and add five and subtract five to it or you know five is just an arbitrary number but you could do that you could just create a range so you don't actually need a uh, geographic support it's kind of nice to have i guess i don't know my sql geodata does it support it or GIS? Spatial data types. So it seems to me like uh, MySQL actually does support geometric values and Spatial data, uh, so I need to search for my SQL spa spatial date. Query by distance, does it support this?
Okay, so it does have the the query by distance uh Yeah. So it has it has query by distance and that should be fine. Mm. I think that PostGIS is better than MySQL. I think that they have query by distance using various projections, which allows you to get more precise, but I don't think that matters. It really doesn't matter if, if we're off by 10% uh, when figuring out which vegan buddies are near you. So I can have it so that there's a Docker compose. And a Docker will have the lobster server running. It will have mm, the cron jobs running somewhere. It will have the uh, user, the the matrix bot for looking up users by location running, and MariaDB. Basically, four containers. And that's basically everything that I need, right? I don't remember. seeing anything else here that requires like its own container, right? Mm. I wonder what active record is. Uh huh. Active record is like the Rails database, and I guess active ra record is a, is kind of like Django, but for Rails. It allows you to create models and easily query the data and create migrations automatically. So, active raider record support to databases. MySQL Postgres SQLite. So it has the exact same list of databases as Diesel, interestingly. Uh, so it actually doesn't matter. We don't have to make any decision like that, uh, whether to use MySQL or Postgres. I, I think I'll do is try Postgres and see how it works out. Um, so I need to have in this lobster's container mm. ruby node and that's it right yeah So our current Docker Compose is building the user index from this file. And uh -huh, we, we already have Postgres set up. And so I will just reuse that Postgres instance. Um, build.
Of course, I will re. I, I will create two Docker Compose settings uh, setups. I'll have one Docker Compose for development and one Docker Compose for production. This is the development version, and so I'm setting it up so that it's easy to um, uh, basically all of these these things should be the same, I think, except for the user. I think the user should be root in. And the, no need for the cargo registry to be loaded. Um, so, should we use the same home directory? That's an interesting question. I guess there's no reason not to because Ruby, I guess Node could, no. Nothing's going to interfere with when doing development. So, I'll just not clutter things and I'll use the same home directory. Makes permission wait uh maybe i don't need a home directory for this i don't know so i'm going to i've created this new directory or i proposed the existence of this new directory called lobsters deploy because I don't want to go and like pointlessly create a fork of the lobsters um, uh, repository. I want to make it so that I'm doing clean upstream to the extent possible and I don't think that they were desiring a good way of developing uh, using docker so they're probably not going to accept a pull request for that. If it turns out that I have a good set up. I can always just change this later. So is Dockerfile capitalized like the file in Dockerfile? I don't remember. From Debian run apt get update run apt get yyq install node js uh, and I've actually never installed Ruby as far as I know in my entire life. That's interesting. Uh, read me Wait, there's also a Docker container already. That seems like it's actually what I should be using. I shouldn't be figuring out how to get all the dependencies installed. I should just be using this. So, So this already has MariaDB set up and okay I'm gonna try this I don't know like to what extent this is if I do this they say that I should in the readme they say I should set custom CSS or I can cut set C custom CSS and if I base I guess I can just, by changing this line, I can build my own Docker container uh, 
and use the same configurations. This Docker file should. Yeah, definitely not worth reproducing all of this work. All I need to do is then like do from that Docker container and then set my own CSS. So <clears throat> going to go ahead and clone this. I'm going to go in here and uh, so I will Okay, this is really, really, um, get restore staged. It's a little bit impractical that they, uh, when you do git submodule add, it actually stages the changes. And now we're back to where we were. And we can do the same thing except with this repo, which is the little repo that we want. Git submodule add. And they say that I should so basically they already they pull in lobsters in a git sub module as well that's funny but it actually makes things easier right so I can easily modify lobsters and build my own custom docker image if I want to. And then they want me to do make. I'm confused though because in the in the docker compose they were using not some uh, custom built docker image but they were using one that was built uh, uploaded to docker hub. Um, maybe I'm just reading too quickly. This is a quick start. So is the make file going to somehow rename this? I'm confused. Because they say that you should run make and then but this is not basing it off of this is, uh-huh, I don't know what happens here. Like, 
What does it mean when they declare this when they declare both an image and a build context? I don't know what that what that does in uh, Docker Compose. I think that this has not been tested for people other than the person who developed it because obviously, or it's, at least it's not documented very thoroughly because uh, this obviously needs to be updated if you're going to use the make push. And so just to get rid of all ambiguity, I'm going to do comments work? I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to try then once this finishes being made running uh, the Docker Compose up. But the next question is so this app, so it's going to be on localhost 3000. Do they say that in the readme? Oh, they, yes, they do. They do. Okay. And then the next question is, what is my username and password going to be like? Or do they expect you to log in and... That's a very, very <laughs> frightening issue sound. I'm I'm also trying to set up the sign up page instead of inv uh but I don't want the sign up page. Uh can you make a container that works like the site underneath? My container is functional but still buggy. I'm looking for something exactly like this hippo fm. Uh that's a broken link. This repo is simply a containerized version of Lobster's features available in Lobster should be available to you via the container. If it's not a feature of Lobster, then you'll need to request it be added there. Yeah, but there are a lot of bugs. In okay, this is some horrible person who's just wanting like commercial support for free. Okay. Um, None of these are answering the question. What is the, how do we reset the, yeah, okay. Username, test, password, test, okay. There was a build error in Ruby, and I don't know Ruby. That's very, very unhappy. Just checking if anybody's responded to anything on Discord and Matrix. No, no new messages. Okay. So, Continuing, uh, so there's this error. Your bundle is locked to my magic, but that version could not be found in any of these sources listed in your gem file. If you haven't changed sources, that means the author of my magic 0.35 has removed it. You'll need to update your bundle to a version other than my magic. Okay. Um, so my magic has been yanked i think it's called um and in this uh i don't know if it's gem file that is the list So 
So this is the version that I don't see my magic here. Um, so is it in the lock file? Maybe, maybe it's the dependency. My magic zero point three two pulled in by Marcel. Uh, so we have one and another my magic zero point three five pulled in by I don't know what. I don't know how. Seems like a top level package, so I'm I'm confused. Um, but if we go to master and we, if we look at gemfile.lock, then my magic is no longer there. So what I need to do is I need to push forward the Git sub module, uh, or maybe if I do CD lobsters pull git branch git remote, and now My magic is no longer there, and we've modified lobsters. Okay, that's great. And now I can do make again, and hopefully this time it will build successfully. not sure what to do while I'm waiting for it to build. I'm not sure how long it's going to take and I don't want to get distracted right now. Um, so I think that I'm going to, while I'm waiting for it to build, look at uh, the CSS, how the CSS thing works. So they say that you should put custom CSS in apps, asset style sheets, local and app assets style sheets and this sets colors and I don't see any like back okay so it has logo here in line so we can change the logo and if we wanted to change the name of the site to Vegan Buddies Mentor Internal, then we probably can't do that via CSS. We probably have to do that via some other means. So we'll try to do as much as possible in CSS and let me just look at the actual site to remind myself what all their okay so actually uh 
There's only the logo. There's, there's, okay, there's a title here that could be changed. And generally, there's not that much that needs to be customized. This about, uh, this chat page can be replaced with the Vegan Buddies app. Stats page is fine. Um, And what's hats? Uh-huh. Okay, so hats would be useful actually because when, uh, if a person is like the head of Vegan Buddies Germany, then they would have head of Vegan Buddies Germany hat. It's like a flare in other sites. Um, but mostly there's, mostly there's nothing that even needs to be customized here. Um, just any mentor will be able to post here, but mostly it'll just be a way of, of having an identity as a mentor. So I'm going to go back and see if, oh, it hasn't finished yet. So, I don't know. I guess I'll just change the logo and that'll be it. For, for now. And I, I guess the about is also something that needs to be changed. So, images. Yeah, these can be changed, but it's easy enough to do that. Um, is the about page defined somewhere? I don't know what ERB means, actually. Okay, so this, I would just edit the source code directly, and I would, or app views about. So I, I need to see in master views about about.html. And yeah, so this can be just, just changed in the in the source code so I will be creating a fork of lobsters and hopefully there won't be so many changes that it becomes difficult to maintain uh, and now it's built so I can do docker compose up
Okay, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I thought it was going to be very quick to load, and it's taking quite... Okay, it's done. You just have to jinx it by, by saying, Login. Test, test. Why not? And now... The questions that I have... I've never actually used the system before, to be honest. I do not have an invitation to lobsters. So, you can submit a story. Um, is this going to work? It, does it have a problem? Uh huh. It says something and it immediately disappears. That's weird. Um. URL is not valid. That's not very user friendly. Submit. Okay, so we can submit a story. And the thing that I'm most interested though in is how you end up uh, inviting other people because that's the thing that I wanted to take advantage of is the ability for one mentor to invite another mentor um, and to create this kind of tree of mentors uh, mentors um, so it's down here uh, so I can type in my email address and this is not going to work because I don't have email configured yet and so I need to figure out how to configure the email but also I think that this isn't as user-friendly as I hoped you know this is this is hidden down here I wonder if there's a way an easy way to make it so this invite a new user thing is like front and center in the in the uh, interface of course it should be possible but I'm actually going to sign off for now this is a shorter stream than normal but I am incredibly tired and I'm not being very productive today so thank you for listening and goodbye